it says it is prepared we already know how it is prepared how is copper sulfate prepared it is a soluble salt other than that of group 1 or ammonium right so group 1 soluble salt and ammonium salts they are prepared through titration but other than that when you have soluble salts you prepare them through excess method how do we prepare them through excess method well obviously saying that he is preparing it by neutralizing dilute sulfuric acid with solid copper oxide so you are going to have copper oxide is going to react it with sulfuric uric acid and it's going to give me copper sulfate acid base reaction is going to take place copper sulfate and h2o is going to be produced right this copper right here and this sulfate right here they're going to form copper sulfate and the hydrogen in the acid and the o in the oxide is going to form h2o and this method is called the excess method how do you go about the excess method right there are three three salts that we prepare one are soluble salts of group one the other are soluble salts other than group one and ammonium soluble salts and the third one is the precipitate uh, the, the precipitation reaction which is the preparation of insoluble salt but since copper sulfate is soluble you need to just know your solubility rules so how do you perform the excess method well obviously you take this copper oxide in excess and the acid is going to be limiting why is that the case well because it is much easier to remove the copper oxide through filtration rather than removing the acid if the acid is in excess then that is an error that is something to think about when performing this experiment how do you separate the acid from the aqueous solution that you form there's it's quite difficult right so you can't do that that's why we have this copper oxide in excess so that we could easily remove it through filtration so you're going to have your h2so4 which is going to be limiting the acid is going to be limiting the copper oxide is going to be in excess and obviously um, they're going to react together let's suppose in a beaker and you're going to end up with uh, um, your product which is copper sulfate right here so you end up with cuso4 aqueous all the acid is used up because it was limiting and you're going to also be left with a chunk of copper oxide let's make it smaller right and now the question is sir why is he using copper oxide you know sir you taught us that you could also use copper you could also use copper hydroxide you could also use copper carbonate no sir you cannot use copper here why can you not use copper because copper is less reactive than hydrogen therefore it would not be able to displace the hydrogen from the acid so remember those those metals which are below hydrogen in the reactivity series you cannot use them in the preparation of soluble salts you have to perform an acid base reaction right you have to have either it's oxide or it's hydroxide or it's carbonate so you could either use copper oxide copper hydroxide or copper carbonate but you cannot use copper why because copper is less reactive than hydrogen this experiment is not going to take place because the reaction is not going to take place right so it cannot be uh, formed through a displacement reaction that is what i wanted to say now you could use copper carbonate and copper hydroxide, but the examiner says no other chemicals should be used. He's only giving you copper oxide, right? So you're going to be left with this excess copper oxide right here. And then obviously, how do you remove this copper oxide from this copper sulfate solution? Obviously, we perform filtration. So you perform filtration. You have this filter funnel, this filter paper. The filter paper is going to trap this copper oxide. And uh, obviously, like my drawing is so crappy, seriously sorry this copper sulfate is going to be my filtrate right and then uh, you pour this filtrate into an evaporating dish and you heat it till the point of uh, crystallization so we heat it till the point of crystallization which is basically the temperature at which the, these these solids start to uh, at which the crystals start to form right so you heat it till the point of crystallization and then you let the solution cool down why do we let the solution cool down because soluble solids tend to become less soluble at lower temperatures so as the point of when the point of crystallization is reached you let the solution cool down so this soluble solid will tend to be less soluble which means it will start to form your crystals and voila you're going to end up with your crystals and you're, you're just going to filter them out once again and then dry them by gently sandwiching them between uh, two filter papers and that's it that's how you prepare your beautiful copper sulfate salts beautiful copper sulfate crystals right now Achha, one more thing some students might think is sir here he has written dry crystals does this mean anhydrous no if it were anhydrous the examiner would have specified that I'm talking about anhydrous then you would not heat it till the point of crystallization you would heat it till dryness right because we would want to remove all the water molecules present and you would end up with a white 
crystal right but since examiner is saying pure dry dry means you have to explain the process of drying it how do we dry it why we gently sandwich it between two filter papers and that's it right so that's exactly what we are going to do and because we are dealing with solid copper oxide here we also want to make sure that the rate of reaction is uh, is is at its peak it's it's highest so what we are going to do is we are also going to when we are going to be adding the copper oxide and sulfuric acid together in a beaker we are going to make sure that we stir it we're going to make sure we warm it we are, we're going to stir it so that this copper oxide is going to break down into smaller chunks to increase the surface area and therefore increase the rate of reaction so this reaction takes place quickly and they're mixed together they react thoroughly with each other right so that's what's going to happen this is my entire experiment this is the diagram which i've been teaching since a long time now let's talk about our um and we say a precaution if i were to ask you how do you know the point of crystallization has been reached well sir we know because uh, you can you can perform a simple procedure to know if the point of crystallization has been reached and what is that procedure you just take a few drops place it on a mic cool microscope slide and if it starts to solidify you're going to notice that you're going to say okay, okay the point of crystallization has been reached okay let's start uh, you may draw a diagram the diagram is already drawn so let's start so what are we going to do we're going to stir or you could say warm the copper uh, the sulfuric acid the sulfuric acid um, and the copper oxide and the copper two oxide um, let's suppose we are performing this in a beaker so in a beaker literally guys you need to understand why am i writing cu let's write it completely copper two oxide you guys need to understand that just by writing these two statements you end up with two to three marks that's how easy it is then we're going to say we're going to add like your we're going to add the copper oxide until the copper oxide is in excess right so we're going to keep on adding the copper oxide until all the acid has been used up or you could say until it is in excess so add copper oxide that's why it's called the excess method add copper oxide until the copper oxide is in excess that is the acid is used up done peeps then what are we gonna do we're gonna obviously filter the mixture why because once the acid is used up you're gonna end up with this copper sulfate aqueous solution and you're gonna get this copper oxide which is gonna be left behind because it's in excess so then we're gonna perform filtration so perform filtration perform filtration to um, remove the copper oxide which was in excess right to remove that because it was in excess we do not need copper oxide we need to have our copper sulfate right and then we're going to pour the filtrate into an evaporating dish and we're going to heat it till the point of crystallization so all of that good stuff so pour the filtrate which is the copper sulfate this is known as the filtrate right right here so pour the filtrate into an evaporating or china dish piece ko kehte hai, evaporating dish and then obviously we're gonna heat it till the point of crystallization done and then obviously we are also going to let the solution cool down we are going to let the mixture to cool down for the crystals to form why because soluble solids tend to become less soluble at lower temperatures so let the mixture or allow the mixture to cool for crystals to form You can also perform filtration once again. Maybe you have certain water molecules, uh, certain water molecules. You know, you maybe have certain uh, uh, an amount of solution that has not solidified. So you can perform filtration again to obtain the crystals as ready. It's it's up to you, right? So you could either perform filtration again, again, or you could just say, "Okay, uh, dry the crystals by gently tapping it between filter papers," right? So you could just dry it. So dry the crystals. by gently 
I literally don't know the spelling of gently. What's the spelling of gently? Gently, I'll just stick with this. By gently tapping it between, or sandwiching it between uh, filter papers. Done peeps, so that's a six mark question and that's how easy it is, literally. You get three marks here, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've written like enough points for the Cambridge examiner to give us the complete marks for it. And uh, that's why I say question number fours are actually the easiest question. Question number twos, fours, threes, the only thing that can be challenging is question number one because it contains a lot of precautions um, and a lot of suggestions. Um, which you could only, uh, most probably, if you have good practice, then you could do it. But um, at times, you haven't performed the experiment in your classroom, so you don't know about all the precautions. So it's good to have practice, and ATP is a full mark paper, to be honest with you. It's such a pet, they have such pet questions that you could easily score full marks. But that's it. I'll upload the next video um, on this particular question right here, this bad boy, baking soda, yeah? So we're gonna do that when I have that time. I just had 10, 15 minutes so quickly made this video. See you guys in the next bit. Bye bye, ciao, Allah Hafiz.